Hey guys, Bluff Monkey back again with Sonic Academy for a series of tech tips to do with Ableton Live, either directly or loosely. We're going to take a look at some things you can and cannot do in Ableton Live and a couple of things that we're going to do that aren't necessarily limited to Ableton Live, but um, we're going to look at them in Ableton Live anyway. Enough chat, let's go. Okay, first thing I want to look at is the filter section in delay plugins. Uh, not all delay plugins have filter sections, but they are there for a very good reason, and I wish to describe to you why they are there. So let's have a look at this. Um, okay, first of all, I've just created a little thing here. So it's just a little arpeggiated line with some chord changes and a drum thing going on. Now on the arpeggiated section, I have applied an EQ to it because we don't necessarily want any of the low end content. If you just have a listen to it. So there's a lot of woofy stuff down there that I'm filtering out before we go into the delay. And I've also got LFO tool as per usual, just ducking this delay line out of the way of the kick. Um, but the reason I've put that here is because I want to put the delay after LFO tool. So if I put the delay before LFO tool, LFO tool will duck the delay hits as well. And it's not necessarily what I want. So let's add a delay. Mayhem. Can you hear what it's doing? So we're getting delays all over the place. Uh, first thing I want to do is just tweak. I'm going to turn this into a ping pong delay. Um, and I'm going to set this to 100% wet so we can hear exactly what the delay is doing. So it's completely filling up the stereo spectrum and a lot of the frequency spectrum as well. So what I want to do is I want to filter these delays uh, for two reasons. First of all, I want to filter them so that they're not interfering with the rest of the mix. And the filter section in the Ableton delay is here. All right, so we've got filtering out the lows here, filtering out the highs here. This little node, this yellow node, allows you to move the filtered section around. And if you push it up and down, it affects the what was kind of representing the cue or the width of the filter. So in fact, if I leave this wet, you can hear what it's doing. And I'm going to leave it about there. No, a bit lower. So the actual cutoff section is at 3.35 kilohertz, but you can see it rolls off quite slowly here. So I'm guessing that's probably around 500 hertz or so that's really starting to reduce. And now what happens is as I take this dry wet level down, We're not getting the delay lines filling up everything. It's not distracting from everything else. Let's just go back to how it was before. So you completely, you completely lose the definition of that nice pluck. So as I said, we're going to have it about here. It doesn't just use your ears. Figure out where you want it. Uh, the reason I want it there is a to get it out of the way of everything else. But B, I've got my knob here attached to the cutoff of this arpeggiated line. And what I want you to listen to is as I open the filter up, okay, as more high frequency content is um, displayed by our arpeggiated sound, the delay almost wakes up. It goes, oh yeah, there's something for me to do. As soon as it gets up to this, what I assume is this section here, I'm pointing at the screen, you can't see what I'm doing. This section here, as the filter of the synth is coming past this frequency, 
the delay line's going, oh yeah, I need to I need to show these people what I need to do here. So have a listen to it. Then you can hear it. So a combination of opening up the synthesizer filter and having the delay being filtered itself, you can actually add to your ability to automate and have <clears throat> like a, a separate effect. So as you open the filter up on the synth, the delay line wakes up and gives you something else as well as the filter on the synth opening up. It's quite a nice effect. It's like a swell. So what you may have noticed is with your plugin, sometimes a delay plugin doesn't have its own filter built in. But you can get around that. Let me just cut this one off. If I set it to, um, we've got a delay on Ascend here. I'm just going to set it up to fairly similar. So the filter's switched off, by the way. So this, the, the delay on the send we've, we're using, the filter switched off and we'll leave it off. Um, I'm going to set it to ping pong again. Now, same thing will happen. If I start sending this synthesizer, let me just mute the drums for a second. Same thing starts happening. You kind of lose definition and everything starts filling up with the delay frequencies. It's horrible. But you can just, on the delay channel itself, this delay send, you can apply an EQ after the delay and do it this way instead. You can only do this on sends, obviously. If you do this on, a, on an insert, the EQ is going to affect the original synth sound as well, which you might not necessarily want. But if we set this to, where did we say it was? I'm, I was guessing around three or 400, somewhere around here. here you've got a similar sort of effect. You may need to, um, because of the way that sends work in Ableton, they're not as loud as an insert would be, so you could use utility just to pump this up a little bit. Be careful though, you don't want it to clip. I'm just going to put it 6 dB, see what happens. I need a bit more feedback on that. You'll need to fiddle with the feedback. You'll need to fiddle with the the absolute EQ settings and the the gain to get it to match what the filter in the EQ in the delay itself does. Uh, but that's why it was one of the reasons why you'd want to use a filter in a delay. So I hope you found this useful, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you want to be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace.